Hey guys, it's Jess from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a paranormal romance recommendation. This is to help prep you guys for the paranormal romance readathon I'm hosting with five of my friends here on BookTube, and I will link my announcement video down below so you can see the bingo board and the announcements. It takes place starting October 30th, and I have a huge stack to share with you. Plus, at the end are going to be some recommendations I plan on hopefully reading myself soon. I have way too many to be on a TBR for the readathon, but they are ones I'm keeping my eye on that you might want to keep your eye on as well. But I am going to go ahead and get to all the books I have to share with you. The first one I honestly have zero recollection of ever reading. It was one of the first paranormal romances, first adult romances in general that I ever read as a teenager that I got from the library, and that is Fangs for the Memories by Kathy Love. I was reading all of these. It was when they were in the trade paperback size with illustrated covers. They looked super cheesy, and I recently found this a half price books, and I was like, I need to give this a reread. This one, I read the synopsis, and it does not ring any bells in my head of what had happened, but apparently he, the main characters are vampires, and this guy says that his brother has a girl at, in their apartment and he normally never does and it's his brother doesn't remember anything from the past 200 years and he remember that he's a vampire and not just a Regency Viscount so that sounds like it's gonna have some like historical mix in a little bit because like the brother's stuck in the 1800s but I don't remember anything so I might listen to this on audio to re remember everything but I remembered loving this series reading the entire thing so should you check it out? It came out in 2005. The obvious one I'm getting out of the way, that is Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. It has dark in the title, it's vampires, and it's amazing. I love this series so much. There's like 19 books out now, 18 books maybe, with spin-off books. They're about vampires, they're faded mates, and the first book was okay. Like, I read it and I wasn't really that impressed, but book two was really good. Book three is my absolute favorite. Book four is my favorite, and they're just amazing. The recent books are not my favorite. I feel like it loses, like, the spark that the beginning books had. You've probably heard of this already. I'm not going to go too much into it. They're just vampires and they fight against lessers who try to kill vampires. And there's like the Black Dagger Brotherhood who are the like strongest, most elite vampires that help protect the vampire race. Then I have Angel's Blood by Nalini Singh. This one's another popular one and an old one and a long one. I've only read the first book. Our main character is a vampire hunter and in this world, angels create vampires. She helps hunt the vampires down if they don't fulfill the contract they made to become a vampire with the angel that turned them and her romance is with an angel. I don't know what kind. He's an archangel, yes. And so um, I enjoyed it. I think I gave this one four out of five stars and I definitely want to continue reading on the series. So this is something I'm going to look at for this readathon. Speaking of angel romances, there's also also, Lisi and Divine by Renee Carlino. This one was really good. It was about a guy who's actually a guardian angel and he's supposed to be looking over her and then he starts to fall in love with her and it's their romance and it's very interesting because it's a different take on angels than I've ever read before. So I'm definitely recommending this if a guardian angel romance sounds good to you. I don't think I've ever read a guardian angel romance. I've read other romances where it's an angel falling in love with someone but not a guardian angel. Then we have Wolf Song by TJ Klune. This is my absolute favorite romance. One of my favorite romances of all time is M. M and it's amazing. It spans over quite a few um, amount of years because it is starts out when they're young and then they're apart for a lot and then they come back together and it's so good. I don't want to spoil anything but there's definitely like that found family aspect in it and they're werewolves. There's witches as well. I think book two is a witch romance. It's so good. I cannot recommend it enough. Book four comes out soon so I have to catch up and reads books two, three, and then four when it comes out. Then the next one, I don't know the difference between paranormal and fantasy when it comes to specific different types of creatures because witches can be found in both fantasy and paranormal. I, if it if it's at all labeled paranormal on Goodreads, I'm counting it because a lot of times there is a category that says fantasy dash paranormal. So I think it can count as both. So it is Fire in His Blood by Ruby Dixon. This is a shifter romance and it's dragon shifters. It's also kind of considered sci-fi post-apocalyptic because like the world is like post-apocalyptic like uh, something happened and they're just all trying to survive and dragons are like have come to take over the world kind of and they attack people and the main character in the first one is kind of like sacrificed to the dragon and like to keep them happy I 
pretty sure, unless it was to trap him. I don't remember. They they've sometimes also sacrificed women to try to trap the dragons, but they end up falling in love, but he has a dragon shifter, so he can shift to a human form and then into a dragon form. Another Angel Romance I have Covet by J.R. Ward. This was definitely not the Angel Romance I was expecting. They don't like fly around and do stuff. He, the main character, like dies in the beginning and then he realizes that there's angels and ends up like having to go and live in a human world. But he's an angel, and there's different paranormal aspects to this. We have our villain, whose name is Davina. She is um, now in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, so that's why I was reading this. So I read the first book, and it wasn't, like, super paranormally to me, but I still enjoyed it, and I'm excited to continue on. It's just not what I expected out of an angel romance, because it wasn't, like, heavy on the angel with the wings and, like, flying around, but it was, like, more like they were there from the afterlife. So, like, our main character has to kind of save the soul of people, so it was really focused on the guy he was trying to, like, save in this one as well. The next one can also be kind of seen as paranormal or urban fantasy, and that is Dark Fever by Karen Marie Moaning. This counts as dark in the title. And our main character ends up going to Ireland because her sister had called her, and... Then the next day, her sister ends up dead, I believe. I think she's dead. I don't even think she's missing. I think she is dead and not missing. I don't remember. But she's got to go and figure out what happened to her sister and ends up running into some fae. And she didn't know. She is a human. She thinks. And then she starts seeing things. And kind of reminds me of the beginning of, like, City of Bones where Clary, like, sees things for the first time in that nightclub. This is kind of like that where she starts seeing things and realizes she's kind of different. And I know there's a romance in here, but it's not really that strong a book one. I've heard it gets better. But there's different kinds of creatures and it feels, like, very magical and witchy. And so I really see this as paranormal, but I can see also it's kind of urban fantasy, especially fae. I feel like are more fantasy, but I've read paranormal where it's fae. So I don't know what category goes into, but this is also something you could read for this. Then I have Queen Takes Knights, and this is a polyamorous romance. It's MMF, and our main character has spent her life pretty much on the run. This is a very interesting, very um, steamy vampire romance because, like, she can't stay in one place too long because something's after her and she doesn't know what it is she just knows she has to continuously run and then these two guys show up to like protect her and she figures out like who she is and has a romance with both of the guys and they're more like bodyguards for her and it was really short and fast and I definitely want to continue on in the series it was just much more graphic than I thought it would be but it was fun it was short and it has vampires <laughs> then I have A Hunger Like No Other by Cressley Cole I read this for the first time last year I believe I haven't continued on and these are the Immortals After Dark series so you tell Technically, you could read it as dark in the title because it's dark in the series title, but this one's definitely Faded Mates. Our main character was, like, locked up in chains in a basement somewhere. He sensed his mate and, like, did something really painful and gross to be able to get out to get to her. And so it was pretty good. I don't even really think the plot was that memorable, though, because I'm having a hard time remembering what even happened in here, but I do want to continue on. I've heard it gets better. It's your classic early 2000s paranormal romance. I don't even remember when this was published. 2006. So it counts for before 2010. It's Faded Mates. It's Vampires. It was decent. Then I have a couple of YA books before getting on to other ones I want to read. And so the first one is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This one is Witches, Brujas, Brujos. And this, our main character, is a brujo, but he is trans. And the witch system, magical system in this book, is very gender-based. So the females have a specific power. The males have a specific power. And our main character knows he's a brujo, but he has not gone through his special training trial celebration to claim his magic, and so he decides to do it himself in order to help find a missing relative and ends up accidentally summoning the ghost of a boy at school who didn't know he was dead, and so they had to figure out what happened to him and kind of fall in love, and it's so good. Can't even recommend this enough. I loved it, and I have the pretty Barnes & Noble edition with that embossed cover, and I love this. Five out of five stars. I would recommend it. Then I have These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. This one's YA FF romance. I did spray the edges myself. This like pretty shiny purple. I really love how it turned out. And our main character is a witch and she really wants to avoid her ex-girlfriend at school. But then someone starts doing this blood magic and that's completely off limits and terrifying. So they're like, who is that? Is there a blood witch in town? We need to figure out who it is. And then she meets a new girl 
and kind of starts falling for her while they're trying to figure out who this blood witch is and it was really fun really cute I enjoyed it a lot and I'm excited to read book two then I recently read White Hot Kiss by Jennifer L. Armentrout I already downloaded the audio of book two this is a demon gargoyle romance our main character is half demon half gargoyle she's been raised by gargoyles though and she has a huge crush on the guy she's kind of grown up with and she ends up meeting a demon though and learning that her demon side might not be completely bad and that who her parents are she might figure out and she, demons are totally off limits they're seen as evil gargoyles job is to like protect earth from demons but she's kind of fallen for this demon she meets and they go on an adventure together trying to find something and it was really good I really liked it it's just like your typical young adult I don't even know when this came out 2014 like that time when all these paranormals are coming out it was fun. All right, I'm gonna just fly through a couple books that I definitely want to read. I don't know the synopses of all of these, but the first one is War of Hearts by Samantha Young. She went by S. Young for this. It is her paranormal romance. I believe they are werewolves, and I own books one and two, and I think book three cover just dropped, so I really want to read this at some point. I also want to read Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Bailey. This is a paranormal romance with vampires. She actually works in a morgue, and her new patient client I don't know dead guy that she's working on ends up being a vampire and he's not actually dead and so in this world humans should not know about vampires but I think they fall in love so I'm excited to read this I also have book two as well gotta get to it then I have dragon actually by G.A. Aiken and I don't even remember if I own any books in this series I have all my paranormal over there like stacked three deep so I didn't look for it but this one is a dragon shifter romance it's pretty old it's pretty long and a co-worker actually recommended it to me but I don't know much about it except for that there are dragons in it then there is kiss of midnight by Laura Adrian this is another vampire romance and I've heard it recommended to fans of the black dagger brotherhood series J.R. Ward even blurbed the cover of this one so I do want to try out a new vampire series that's old and loved so I hope we'll try this out soon next one is kind of a lot so it is dark seduction by Brenda Joyce and this one has a lot to the synopsis so um, our main character is the newly chosen master and he makes a mistake so someone dies and so he's sworn off any kind of pleasure for himself and then he meets the beautiful bookseller Claire and she is still covering from her mother's death and then he ends up sweeping her back into his time it said he's a medieval warrior so I think there's some time travel and I don't know if she was voluntarily taken back or not but I'm excited it's the Masters of Time series I ordered a bunch of these off of eBay so hopefully I enjoy this one then we have Sacrifice by Katie Robert all I know that this is an MMMF vampire romance so I believe it's a novella. I'm definitely going to read this for the readathon. I love Katie Robert, so I really want to get to this. Then I really want to read Jacob by Jacqueline Frank. It is book one in the Nightwalker series. I see Brie from In Love and Words talk about this a couple of times, and I know she loved it. This is book one, and it is about Nightwalkers who live in the shadows and the moonlight. Love with humans is forbidden, and Jacob has been the enforcer for 700 years. It says he's resisted temptation, and then he sees a woman and um, decides to give in to his desires I think so another forbidden romance I do like it when paranormals it's like forbidden for the race to be in love with humans so I'm excited to read it and those are all my recommendations plus some extra ones that I have my eye on for paranormal romances let me know down below what your favorite paranormal romances are or if you're participating and what you're excited to read I would love to hear as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye